welcome guys um this is a little kind of scary because they just kind of threw this in our face but you know we're going to try to do our best to teach you guys about photography and videography today um so today we are going to try to understand the key components of cameras um we're going to master the fundamentals of exposure learn about focusing techniques, explore composition and framing, discover tips for better photography and videography. So if you guys have any questions as we go through this, please don't hesitate to ask, all right? And my brother Dante is gonna help me out here if I'm missing anything, right, Dante? Yes, sir. All right, uh, by the way, after I'm done, Dante is gonna go through some of the equipments that you might need to purchase for your um, for your churches and how to get it set up. And also, this is not to like give you everything. This is just to get you started, right? Because um, I believe next year we're gonna try to have a conference where we're actually gonna get some hands-on on, on uh, photos, videos, lighting, audio. Right. So, again, this is just the basics of doing photography and videography. Cool. All right. So first thing. Your camera uh, for camera anatomy, we have your camera body. I have an example here. This is a camera body. Uh, there are different types of cameras. This is mainly a photography camera, but it also does video, right? Um, we have your lens. This is the lens right here. I'm sure some, I'm sure most of the lenses and camera bodies, but I just want to go through it. All right. Um, so with the camera body, we have shutter, right? We have your aperture, ISO sensor view uh your viewfinder okay so your shutter is what controls or the time that you use to freeze your object okay your app your aperture is how focused your object is in your frame all right your iso and if i'm talking too fast please let me know Okay, and uh, I'm not sure how many of you know some of these things or uh, some of you, if you don't understand anything at all, okay? If I'm talking too fast, please let me know, okay? Okay, so we're back to ISO. So ISO is pretty much your, how sensitive your, um, your camera is to light. And then you have your sensor. Your sensor is what captures the photo, all right? So this is, if you look inside this camera body, uh, sorry, I'm trying to focus here. Oh, anyways, if you look inside the camera body, that's the sensor. That's essentially what captures the photo, all right? And then we have a viewfinder. Viewfinder is, this thing right here, that's where you look in to take your photos. And then now these cameras have some of these screens. So you don't, most times we don't even use these as much anymore. All right. Again, so what I'm, what I'm teaching uh, applies to photography and videography. It's just for videography. It's just a it's just a little bit different, but there's not much difference to it. Cool. Cool. Oh, cool. So, a lot of times, if you get cameras, it comes in different modes. Yeah. So you have your auto mode, which pretty much shoots everything does everything for you um i know a lot of times people when people get cameras they don't know anything about photography or videography what they do is they just put it in auto mode and and just start shooting away i did it when i first started it so don't be ashamed if you're doing it okay um you have your program mode 
program mode is also like the auto mode, but um, it gives you kind of a a big a bit of a room to change some of the settings. And then you have your shutter priority mode, which um, when you set it to shutter priority, it will change everything except for your, the shutter that you set the camera to be. And then you have your aperture priority mode. And again, that also will, the camera will change everything except for your aperture on, um, on auto. It's also an auto uh, preset mode. And then you have your manual mode. So your manual mode is where you set everything on your own. So you get to set your exposure, your shutter speed, your aperture. Um, for me, most times I use manual mode because I like to control what I'm capturing. All right. So now we have something that's called exposure triangle. What exposure, what a, uh, the exposure triangle is, is essentially uh, these three uh, things that control the lighting of your camera, right? So we have your shutter speed, your aperture, and your ISO, all right? What is shutter speed? Shutter speed or exposure time is the length of time that the film or digital sensor inside the camera is exposed to light when taking a photo. And remember what I said. So your shutter speed is the amount of time that it takes to freeze an object in your camera. So for example, if we're doing sports, right? I might set my shutter speed to, the shutter speed is the time that it takes to freeze an object in your camera, okay? so. If you are shooting a fast object, so for faster objects, you want to do a faster shutter. So that could be from anywhere from 165th to 1350, right? One over 350. Um, for video, most of the times for video, if you are doing 24 frames per second, now that's a whole, like I said, video is like a little bit different. Uh, frames uh, that we we shoot at. So for if when you see movies, most of the times they're shooting at like 24 frames per second or 60 frames per second, right? Um, that's how how fast the camera is capturing images, right? So that's just a little bit of of video. But for video, for your shutter, most of the times you're either doing one over 48, one over 50, or um, depending on if you're doing a faster, a slow motion, you might be shooting at 125th or 250 or, you know, whatever you set your your uh, frame per second at for video. All right, so aperture. Aperture, again, is what controls the amount of light that enters your camera. So your aperture, is pretty much how wide or how wide or how you know narrow your your you see the inside of the lens that's what we consider as aperture right so the more the wider the the lens is the inside of the lens is the more light that hits your your sensor right and when it becomes small it's less light so aperture can range anywhere from one point. Actually, honestly, I've seen like 0.8 to like F22, right? So if you are at 0.8, your lens could be wide open, like, right? And then F22 is just, you could barely get any light in there, right? And when you see photos, when you see when you see how blurry the background is, that's how you know the aperture is either like at 1.8, 2.8, because when the lens opens wide, it focuses on just the object and blurs everything else out. Right? Um, yeah, Doctor, you have anything to add on to that? 
Yeah. Um, <clears throat> basically, camera pan is the same thing. Like the lower the aperture, like the two point eights and lower, the more blurred the background will be. So not just about um the light, like he's explaining, like that nice blurry background that that some of us love comes from the 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 lower aperture numbers, like the two point eight, the one point four, is one point two. But then when you want like if you're pointing at a stage, like with the choir and stuff, like you you might want like a a bigger aperture, probably to have a more of the the subjects in focus. So maybe like a f6, f6 to an f8 or something. Um, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And then the higher of the aperture you go, so let's say you go to like f22, the less light that's going to hit your your sensor. So that means you're going to have to get more lights or, you know, um, yeah, or yeah. raise your, your uh, ISO. Yes, it's pretty much like any type of setting you tweak on the cameras, you're going to have to adjust your environment because your camera is just taking in the information from your environment. It's not really changing that. So the better your environment is like suited, it's just going to capture what it is. That's the whole point. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So ISO, I think I've, I've pretty much hit this. Um, ISO controls the amount of light your camera lets in and uh hard dark uh hard dark or light your photos will be so again your iso is pretty much so i'm going to turn on my camera here oh, let me see let me turn off the blurry background thing just gonna all right so if you look at the back of my camera can you guys see it Oh, uh, man. All right, I'm going to do this. Give me one second here. Oh. Okay. Oh, man. All right. Can you guys see it? Yeah. So yeah, if you look at the back of my camera, this is your ISO, right? So ISO is pretty much saying um, how much light you want your sensor to take in, right? And the higher you go, the more noise you get in. And then the less you go, the less light you get in, but your the the quality of the image is is going to be better, but that means you would have to add more light because you're not letting a lot of light into the uh, the sensor. Make sense? Cool. So. Okay, so now we have what we call the autofocus and manual focus a lot of cameras nowadays have really good autofocus i think i'm missing oh somebody raised their hands i'm sorry golda can you check on these because i'm not really paying attention on these oh yes i was going to wait till you're done talking before oh okay questions but if you want i can unmute them yeah let's go through some of the questions okay um Dwayne was the first one so i think you can unmute now Dwayne, to ask your question yeah, after you take the picture, can you change the aperture? After okay. after you take the picture? Yeah. So, um, no, you can't change your aperture after you take the picture. However, I just I just found out that there's a software called um, Lightroom, which um, we use for post production, um, that can actually help change. You know, this new AI thing that can help change the aperture not really change it but you know blur out the background yeah i was about to say lightroom um has had a lot of like easy updates for the, mm -hmm. the composer to have those same effects that kwame's talking about okay somebody else had a, a question um yeah sam i think you can unmute yourself now thank you 
Um, so you mentioned that both the aperture and the ISO allows, it controls how much light comes in, right? Mm -hmm. What's the difference there? Is the difference more of like the aperture is connected to the lens that you're using and ISO is the, in the body of the camera? Is that the difference? Yeah, so aperture is, again, um, let me show you. Aperture is how wide your lens is opening. Um, let me see if I can, I'll kind of step here a bit. All right, so, so you see this lens, right? When I, when I uh, change my, well, I can't really change it right now because it's not on the camera, but the wider the lens opens, the more light hits the sensor, right? But with the sensor, so the ISO changes the the exposure of the sensor, or how much light is is coming into the sensor, right? So even if you have your sense your ISO put at like ISO one hundred and your aperture is at like one point eight, yeah, it might let in some light, but it's not going to let in as much light as if you put your ISO at like 500 or 400, right? Um, and if you change your ISO, so I don't, I don't want to get into the, the tech, the technical stuff of it because it gets deeper because the sensor is like, there's like little tiny things in there that collects the information that, that's coming in. So the more light comes in, then you get into the image being grainy and you know kind of messing up. So that's that's where we kind of have to come come back down here and just you know stay with the basics. But essentially, yes, the ISO changes how much light is coming into the sensor, and aperture can also change how much light how much light is coming into the sensor. Yeah, and I think to add on to it, one key difference is that when you're changing your ISO it may bring in something called grain, which is like a, a different type of concept. So when you're changing your aperture, it doesn't have any too much negative effects when you're changing your ISO. If you just start increasing, increasing it just to make your thing lighter, it, it's actually might be making the image worse. So that's would be a difference. Yeah, exactly. All right, cool. We have any more questions? Um, I think we have one more from PK. Give me one second. Um, you can unmute now to ask your question. Yeah. Hi. Good evening. Thank you for sharing this and sharing all the information and insight. I just have a really quick question regarding the slides. Is it possible to send these slides to us? I know you guys are recording it, but I think if it's possible, you guys can send the slides so that everyone can ha easily refer to it. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, I'll have David send it out to everybody. David, is David on? He's at work right now, so he's not able to um, okay. talk. Yeah. We well, so, yeah, we, can we make sure we uh, we have David send it out to everybody that wants it? Yeah, I'll remind him and he'll probably like send out like a mess message or email. But there are some questions in the chat. Um, I don't know if you want me to read it out or wait till like you're done and then we can go through those questions as well. Okay. Um. Yeah, let's get through this and then we can answer those questions. Okay, sounds good. All right, so now we're getting into some of the fun stuff, composition. So what composition is, is how you're framing your subject, right? And we have something called the rule of thirds. Now your camera comes when you turn it on. Um, you can have a setting. If, oh, change my. You see these lines right here? Oh, why is my camera? I'm so sorry. Yeah. Okay. So you see the the lines on my camera, right? That's what we call the rule of thirds. So. How do you use that to your advantage? You use that by um, um, using it to frame your subject. So a lot of times you wanna keep your subject in the middle, 
right? That's how you know your subject is in frame and is in a good position for the the pic the image. Or Dante, am I am I? Yeah, that is one hundred percent right. Like if we're looking at a stage, right? Since we're, we're applying this all to church, um, the preacher is always going to be in the center if this is the main shot. So just like you're saying, like where those um that main angle that's where the person would be cool and then we we have what we called leading lines leading lines are um usually finding a a line in your in your frame to just kind of um guide your how do I say your audience's eyes to the up to the subject, right? So let's say let's take say for instance, if you look up in the ceiling, right? There's a line right there. So if, let's say I'm taking a picture and I want to guide the viewer's eye to me. I will probably frame myself in the middle here, so when the viewer looks at it, you know the lines will lead them to me. Does that make sense? Yeah, if I'm confusing anyone here, please let me know. Okay, cool. And then we have framing. Framing is just, you know, putting your camera on on the subject, making sure that they're in frame, that they're in, the camera can see them. And then we have what we call background and foreground. So background is pretty much like, if you look behind me, I have stuff in the back. That's the background of the image. And then foreground is say, there's like a tree or a person in front of you, right? And you wanna focus on me. My hand becomes the foreground and then I'm the object and then there's the background. Make sense? A lot of times we use foregrounds to just kind of make the picture look a lot more cinematic or beautiful or you know lead foreground can also lead um the viewer's eyes to the object in your frame cool All right. All right the fun part lighting so we have lighting and then we have i put strobe lights but it should be artificial light Right, um, natural light. So your natural lights are your windows, like lights coming from the sun. Um, you know, when you turn on your light bulbs or whatever. Uh, and then we have your artificial lights, which which can be your continuous lights or your strobes. Um, now with natural light, if you're shooting natural light, um, if you're doing photography, you would want to keep your ISO low and bring your shutter speed up high so you're not letting in too much light. A lot of times if the, the sun is too high, those are some of the things that you want to change. Or you can even change your aperture to just kind of, you know, turn down the, the lighting that's hitting your sensor. Uh, with artificial lights, you have the the ability to just, you know, control it on your own, set everything the way you want it to make sure you're getting the, the correct lighting to your image. Dante, you want to add? Um, yes, when it comes to lighting, I think especially when it comes to video in terms of live streaming, um, this is the base point of how you're going to expose your image when you're sending it out to the internet. So like, your stage it's since that's the main place it needs to be lit in a specific way that is illuminating the skin tone to be sent out for the viewers to see that you know is is pretty much good so that just has to be adjusted as well being adjusting the camera settings to kind of match which is more complicated but the basics is lighting and audio are like the main two of everything before the cameras come into play Awesome. All right. So we're going to move on. Do you guys have any questions on lighting? 
before we move, we move on. I'm, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Anyone? Okay, we're gonna move on. All right. So now we get to white balance. Um, white balance in your camera is very, very important when you're doing photos or videos. White balance is essentially um, telling your camera what every object that's supposed to be white. Um, so you you set what we called um, your Kelvin. I'm going to go in here again. I'm going to show you on my camera. Give me one second. I'm gonna show you here. Yeah. I'm sorry, give me a second here. My screen is not showing up. Yeah, while Kwame's pulling that up, um White balancing will also affect the color of your image based off of the lights that are bouncing off the front stage. And there's, you know, the simple, cool, warm, and the neutral. And we're you're always just trying to get it as neutral as possible so that everything looks like consistent colors. Yep. Um, and then continuing from there. So your your camera has already has some presets, right? Every camera already has presets. So it comes with like the sun, having a shade, having clouds, um, flash or tungsten light or white light. Most of the times you wanna use your, your, uh, your custom button to set what the, the room where you're shooting at is looking at like, because if you put it on auto, the camera tries to do it on its own and a lot of times it doesn't go so well, right? Um, one thing that I will recommend, give me a hair, I'm gonna pick up something. It's right here, I'm sorry, the answer. All right, so you guys would wanna get a balance card. This is what most of the time I use to balance my my camera. So it has a gray side, which is the neutral, and then it has a white, right? You can, um, there's a, a settings in your camera that we'll go over some other time that allows you to change your white balance in the environment that you're in with this card. Cool? All right. Okay. So do we have any questions? Uh, Golda, I think we can go over the questions now. Okay, I'm going to unmute um, real quick, just in case. We do have some questions in the chat, but if people can raise their hands too, they can just talk. Um, okay. Eric, you can go ahead and um, ask your question. Yes, please. Um, God bless you guys for taking time out of your day to teach us this. I was just wondering, um, is there something you guys recommend uh, or a class or something specific you guys recommend for someone who wants to like learn about, learn more in depth about cameras and videography and like pick it up as a hobby, please? Yeah, so I do have a couple of links that I recommend. If you are interested in it, um, Golda, can you take down names? Then I can email that to you, whoever is interested in that. Yes, I'll take down names. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Do we have any more questions? All right. Um, somebody asked, is there a recommended camera that we uh to get started? For me, um, there's a camera that Canon just came out with. It's called the Canon R10. Uh, if you get the kit, I think that's a, a great way to start photo and video because that it's a it's a hybrid camera. It does photo and video. Um, 
So if you get the kit, it comes with a lens and all that stuff that you need to get you started. So that's a camera that I, I would recommend. Dante, any camera that you recommend? Um, I think I feel like this the Sony ZVE one. It's I knew that's what he was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a Sony guy. Um, and it, I think it might be under a thousand. So, um, and okay. also comes with the detachable lens. So, like, I feel like that's a great way to start. Okay. The only thing about the Sony uh, EZV one is it overheats. So. When you're doing photo, when you're doing video, especially when you're doing video, so just uh, be aware of that. But the R10 doesn't really overheat, so yeah. Oh, I, I, and then R10, and Sony E. e. All right. Do we have any more questions? Um, Simon had his hand up. You can ask your question, Simon. Yeah. Um. Thank you guys for the time and the information. Uh, I just want to find out what strategies can you employ if you have a mixed lighting situation? For example, at church, we have lighting on the stage, but we don't have um, that stage lights in the congregation. So how do you maintain an accurate white balance and a consistent color? For example, if you move right from the stage, mm -hmm. you can see like the color is, do you keep adjusting every time there's a switch or once you get it set, it should probably go with all the shorts or whatever frame you get? Yeah, so with white balance, you're pretty much just giving an overall look of what the room is, right? Um, you don't, you don't have to keep, you don't, well, actually you shouldn't be changing anything once you set it. So, um, usually what you want to do is you want to set it for the stage. You want to set the white balance for the stage because that's where you're mostly going to be shooting. Right. Um, with the audience. Now that's where we get into, you know, so we're trying to get some churches to start investing in like lighting properly lighting the, uh, uh congregation and all that. But, if you don't have enough lights, you, you can raise your ISO. But again, the more you raise your ISO, the more noise you introduce into your image, right? But a lot of times people don't even realize that there are noise in the, in the image. So right for now, if you don't have proper lighting, I think you should just, you know, stick with, um, raising your ISO, but don't raise it too high that the noise is distracting. Victor, go ahead. Yeah, what's up, bro? Thank you uh, for the opportunity. Um, quick question. So if you have like, most of us have the LCD screens in the background of our shots, what settings do you wanna be uh, adjusting to get the little flickering lines out of the shot? Okay, so Thank with you. that, that's the the, I think that's where Dante was going with the gigahertz, right, Dante? Yeah. Um, you you want to go over that? So I think, and and I don't know if Kwanfi would disagree with me, but I really feel like this type of question is very specific to each single place because the screen itself flashes at a specific speed and you can lower or raise the power. So just how I was talking about, you have to match the lighting to get your correct exposure on in camera. You also have to match the exposure that's coming from the screen because it's flashing at a specific speed. So the reason why you're seeing that like slow or it's not in sync is because the frame rate in the camera is different. So in general, I feel like what's worth best for me because everything is preferential I feel like around 60 frames a second and then just messing with the shutter speed, the one over when he was talking about the one over 140, one over 150, um, just messing around with that to find a specific one that just stops it from flickering, then maybe adjusting the lighting to fix the exposure. But I don't know if, if Kwame also has a- Yeah, yeah, no, I agree with you. Um, A lot of times, 
your frame per second like from 50 to 60 and then if you if you're between 50 to 60 i know your shutter speed can go beyond 125th 160 and you'll be fine right you like you you're still you're still going to get a motion blur for your objects um but again you don't want to go up too high and then you start getting like jitters in your image right does that make sense victor yeah thank you so much please kwame yes. um for those of us who don't know what noise is what is noise in the camera and what does uh, shutter speed do if you didn't talk about that already yeah so the again so let's go back your your camera sensor has the ability to take in so like it has a limit of taking in a certain amount of light right so the the higher you raise your iso the more noise you introduce into your image the noises are it's like tiny bugs just in front of your your uh, camera um here let me see give me one second Turn on my camera. Okay, so oh, uh, so I was gonna try to show you guys, but I don't think you'd be able to see it. But once the image starts getting grainy, you're you're gonna notice. There's no way to you know not notice it. You're just gonna see a bunch of tiny things on your screen just moving Thank Thank you. can you show can you show a picture of what like a noisy yeah um, okay give me a second and and a clear one like or and not noisy or not a grainy one so that we kind of see what we're talking about and yeah. mostly like what what would be the best setting for let's say most of our local churches they don't have some of them don't even have lights it's just the regular old lights from the auditorium. Now, if they have that, what are some of the ideal settings for those? And some of other churches do have like a, a dark, relatively dark or dim or kind of ambience look, like let's say PIWC Worcester or PIWC at, um, Worcester um, Central. They kind of mm -hmm. have that, you know, you know like a dim uh, look. So having a, a, a different, obviously, where you worship determines what settings would you be. But on a, in a general, what settings would you go for, like a dim or a yeah. A, a so light? with that, we were going to answer those questions after Dante goes because I believe Dante is supposed to talk more about the streaming, like getting set up and all that um right Dante yeah yeah for sure yeah we were gonna get into details after from there on um because you know it depends what equipment that you have if you have like a camcorder or you know those those old school type cameras then you know there there's no way we can get rid of some of these noises right but if you have newer equipment um then there are ways to go about it to make it work. I agree. Um, okay. So I'm, I was going to show a quick second. I'm, I'm going to show a, an image of a clear image and a noisy image. Okay. So this is a You guys see my screen? Yes. This is a picture of a clean image, right? Just study this image. You can see, you can see everything clearly. I mean, it's not that clear, but you know, just for an example's sake. And then this is a picture of you're raising your eyes so too high and getting noisy image. Do you guys see this? 
Yes. Yes. Okay. It doesn't look blurry. It just looks like noise. It looks like uh, yeah. It's just it's just a bunch of yeah. Those tiny things that I was telling you about just going to be moving in front of your image, your camera. So with this, your if your ISO is high, that mm -hmm. is what's going to cause this. That's what's going to cause this. Yes, it's, if it's too high. Um, what is the number? What is high? Some cameras have the ability to have high ISO and not be this noisy. Like, I, and as I said again, it depends what equipment you're using. Um, I know for a fact most from some of the cameras from like 2010 to 20, let's say 2018, the highest you can go is between 800 and 3200 before you start getting noise. But with these new cameras that have come up, you can go so high. I know the FX3, you can go up to like 128,000 or something like that, right, Dante? Yeah, 12,000. Yeah. You, and you still have a clean image. That's my camera, favorite of all time. Canon, yeah. Magic, you know, <laughs> this guy you know doesn't. That, but Sony is the best way to go. Yeah, come on, come on, bro. Nikon gets some love too. Kwame, just to you guys don't do black magic products. No, we're gonna get we're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. Yeah, go ahead, Josh. So jump in. I don't know if Dante you'll talk about this. Can you speak a little bit into presets? Um, I don't know if that's Dante's part of Dante's or Kwame you want to talk about presets on um cameras, you know, because for example, some people sometimes have the live stream preset and then they want to go film something let's say an announcement video and they don't realize that the whatever you have set for live stream is not the same setting for um whatever you're going to film in a smaller space mm, okay um, so yeah with that I, yeah you want to kind of educate people yeah so a lot of cameras come with um modes that you can you can save your presets too. See that it's kind of tricky because every camera is different, right? So if you guys have questions about your camera, uh, hit me up on the side and I can explain to you. Yeah. Yeah, I think based on what Kwame is saying is like, you're saying if we had to do like an announcement video to to put on the live stream, um, each camera is different, so but each of these cameras have built-in profiles that already have like color to it or like, you know, these things. So if you've already set it for that main stage, then when you want to do this other thing, you just have to remember, you might have to just retweak the, the shutter, the aperture and the ISO for whatever you're doing. And then that may just, um, it just, it's more like preferential. So just like one said, if you have a specific, if you have a specific question, on your camera rig, then you know you could probably just hit them up specifically. Amos, go ahead. Hello, you guys, hear me? Yeah. Yes. Um, this is actually a very good presentation. So God bless you guys for that as well. Um, I just want to get your preferences towards lenses. Lenses. So, when do you think is a good time to like change your lenses? In terms of it, like you're starting with a camera, what do you think is like an appropriate oh. change of lenses? Um, you mean during service or just in general, like when in you're upgrade your lenses? Yeah, I think once you're like very comfortable with, you know, shooting manually and just getting your image right, change mm. upgrading your lenses at any time shouldn't be a problem. But you know, again feel comfortable with shooting before you go and spend like two thousand or three thousand dollars on these lenses oh true Alex. and i think i think lenses are different than camera bodies um so lenses i think on the market last longer maybe i could be this could be a, a numbers could be off but i feel it's like oh you're right yeah mm. it's like super long so like once you buy that lens it does Depending on the lens, it actually the value of it sometimes even rises up over time. Yeah. There's one lens that I've had for like 10 years. 
and I've changed camera bodies over and over and over. Also, like it's more like capable of changing like bodies than lenses in general. Like, yeah, because technology is always upgrading, right? So yeah. the bodies change; they change different things that um, different tools in the body that you know you might want, or it looks it looks good to you, or. Mm -hmm. It will help make things easier. So you most likely going to change your body than the lens. And the lenses, yeah, makes sense. Thank you, Simon. Um, yeah, before um, that goes, uh, do you have a recommended method for managing focus, especially when you are dealing with moving objects? Uh, for yeah, example, so specifically off a tree. During off a tree, people come and. When they get closer, it gets a bit mm -hmm. blurry. But when mm -hmm. they move out, 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 um, away from the camera, then the focus, like, it, it goes back to normal. So do you have any preferred method or recommended method of managing the focus yes. during that so period? Yes, so with that, um, I'm, what what equipment are you using? So I know how to... Yeah, specific. Black Magic. You're using black magic. So with black magic, what you want to do is get a focus, uh, uh focus, uh, Dr. Help me out here. Focus color motor, focus motor. I'm sorry. Yeah. Get a focus motor. Um, so you can manually focus yourself and, you know, just put in some time to just learn how to manually focus. I think that will help you a lot. Uh, we do have a focus, um, I'll say, tab on the lens. We can adjust. But my question is, do you keep adjusting, like, focus whilst they come and leave? Because a bunch of people yeah, have so to set it. That's what I'm saying. So with Black Magic, Black Magic has horrible autofocus. I know what you're talking about. You press on it, and it focuses on the subject, right? Black Magic is known to have very horrible autofocus. If now, if you're using like Sony or Canon, then yeah, you can tap on the screen and you know it will focus quick. But Black Magic, you you want to do manual. You don't want to do uh, auto. Um, yeah, we don't do uh, autofocus. We do the manual. You do so, manual, okay? Yeah. But okay. Uh, I don't know if um I just wanted to find out if you have a recommended method or how to handle the focus, especially during that um, motion or movement situations. Oh, honestly, it's it's more about practicing and knowing, you know, going up. I mean, moving forward or back, knowing your um your uh there's a word for it. I'm I'm just blanking out here. But essentially, you want to know. How how quick your lens can can be in focus, or can be out of focus, right? Because there, are, so we have two different types of lenses. We have the electronic ones, and then we have the cinema lenses. The cinema, okay, the cinema lenses tend to have uh, more focus breathing. Uh, what do you call it? There's a word. I'm sorry. I'm blanking out. But the electronic ones don't really have a lot of focus breathing in between them. So that one is kind of hard to manually focus. But if you do get a, a cinema lens, it's it, you have more uh, breathing room to get your focus on point. Does that make sense? Oh, yes, it does. Okay. And I but think you just have to practice your moving up and down with the focus. Yeah. And knowing, yeah, sometimes it's a bit challenging, especially mm -hmm. when they are moving. When they come very close to the camera, mm -hmm. they, it gets so blurry. And when you adjust it, those who are further from the camera, you just miss it. So either you have to focus. Oh, on so I see what you're saying. Yes. So For some lenses of offering, they will just keep passing. And while yeah, so some coming, lenses have a a distance where the up the object, how far the uh, what's the word? Doctor, help me out here. How far the they have, they have a, a limit of how far the object can be or how close the object. Oh can yes, be. yes, yeah. Is that the focal distance? Yeah. So 
depending on what lens you're using, uh, you might not be able to focus the pe uh, on the people that are closer to you because the lens is limited. But if, we're talking, if we were talking in like our application within church, um, even if you were using a black magic, you really shouldn't have to focus if you like set the right distance from you and the subject. So if it was, if we talk about the main shot specifically, and then we talk about like a walking by shot, the main shot you could, I think you could actually just set the black magic there with a certain aperture, let's say like an F6, F8 most of the background should be in focus mm -hmm. um and while you adjust your lighting in ISO that's different but then even if someone is walking in and out of frame as long as they're in that general area it will be in focus but if let's say you're using the you don't have autofocus but you're walking through an aisle and you're trying to get that like passing by shot and maybe it's handheld or on a gimbal whichever um you probably should be the easiest way is probably to have like a higher aperture than a than a 2.8, maybe an F4, because the higher you go, it'll be easier to focus. And then once you set that focus and you're walking through, maybe you should be more mindful of how close you're walking to. Because if you walk side to side and you're walking through the aisle, which is probably most likely what it's going to be, it's going to be the same focus distance for each person. So then actually each single person would actually be in focus and you wouldn't have to readjust. You probably so you probably just have to adjust how close you bring yourself to and from the the aisle. That kind of makes sense. Does that make sense, Simon? Oh yes, it does. Thank you, guys. Okay. And then also make sure you utilize your focus assist. So Black Magic has a focus assist on there that you can turn on. It lets you know when the object is is in frame or in focus or not. Yep, sure. Look into that. But sometimes, like I'm saying, it's a bit awful. So, yeah, uh, we just have to deal with it. No problem. All right, Dante, you want to hit on streaming? Okay. Um, I can share screen. Yeah, uh, Golda, can you give him permission, please? Yeah, he should have access. Your co-host, and you should be able to share. Okay. All right. You guys see my screen? Yep. Okay. So um we we're just here to talk about streaming really quickly. I'm not going too in depth, just like the basics, but um, what we have here are two separate budgets for someone who's just starting from scratch. Um, and um, the left side gives you a budget that has one camera angle, and these are estimates. So it's always gonna fluctuate a couple hundred dollars here and there. So these aren't, would be like exact prices, but they're pretty close estimates on today's prices. Um, and you have your your camera, your lens, your tripod, and your camera switcher, or what we call our capture card. Um, then we have the Mac, which we'd recommend, and the Mac Mini, and then HDMI cords and monitors. Um, and this is who like the type of budget you should present um, to your pastors or presbytery. And then. Um, uh, you Again, I know a lot of times churches look at this number and they go, whoa, like this is too much. But we also have to think this is for the future. This is not just for the now, right? We're investing it for the future of the church because these equipments can last you a very long time if you properly take care of it. Yes. And just like what Kwame is saying is that... Um... It looks like a lot of money, but we waste more money when we start off wrong because then we have to redo everything from scratch. And that's always more costly. Whereas if we all just start at a good starting point, it's easy to build on and add more angles and get these cranes and these gimbals and all this other, other fancy stuff. But if we just start the system off well, then going forward, 
everybody will just be on the same playing field, if that makes sense. Um, so the first thing to talk about is you need, um, what we're going to recommend is the Mac Mini um, and two monitors. The reason why I recommend the Mac Mini, um, just for graphics and many other things, it has some of the best processors for live streams and other things. Um, and then just any uh, monitor, at least two of them. The reason why um, you need two is, well, I'll get into that in a second. Um, now, the softwares that we recommend are OBS. Um, OBS is a streaming software, and um, it's an open broadcast software, basically called OBS, um, an open source solution for online video recordings and live streaming. And it's compatible with Mac and Windows. But in our case, we're recommending to use this on a Mac. Um, and I'll also go through like a, a very like brief walkthrough on OBS. Like I'll just pull up like a like a some settings and like pull up some scenes real quick. And the place that we recommend streaming to is YouTube. Um, YouTube has the for social media has the least amount of compression. That's why you see a lot of live streams on YouTube. Um, but you may not see them on Facebook or maybe Instagram. Um, it's just because YouTube just has the bandwidth and capacity to bring in more data. Um, and it can just handle that well. And um, Dante, just to um, go add on to that. So if you do want to stream to like Facebook or or Twitter or Instagram or whatever, um, there is a, uh, is it a software or a website that you can use to stream all these together? It's called Restream. That's a, a it's a paid website that you can use to uh, stream to multiple platforms at once. But again, we'll go over that another time. Yes, yes. Restream is definitely another way. Um, but just like you said, another time. Um, so now... Once we have the computer and we have set up OBS, um, we are actually allowed to stream. Now, the this next part with the switcher, this is what you're sending to OBS. So this is the A2 Mini Pro. Um, I actually put the wrong one on here. I'm sorry, Kwame. Yeah, uh, no, it's okay, bro. This, the one we're supposed to get is the A2 Mini Extreme. Um, that one gives you eight, H eight H HDMI ports, you know, two SS, um, USB C ports, um, and there's nothing really too too like complicated about it at all. Like you just download the software from Blackmagic.com, or when you get the the switcher device and you plug it in, there is no like. I'm pretty sure there's not really a big like drivers issue or loading. Like it's very simple and basic. Um, so you plug in your power, which is on the, the right side. Um, you wouldn't plug in your ethernet into here. Um, you would plug your ethernet into your computer because that's where you're going to stream from. Um, there are other things like setting up a whole network and stuff like that, but like, that's not necessary for this type of thing. Um, this USB-C port over here, which there would usually be two. Um, you can use one of the USB-C ports to connect directly to your computer. And then let's say like, just like how we were in COVID, we had to set up a bunch of, do a bunch of recordings for church. Um, the other USB-C port could be used to, to do the recording. Um, and so then that would like simplify your whole process because you can cut all the angles live and be done with it and just send it off to whoever needs the recording. Then you just have these HDMI cords, which you'd have to buy separately. And HDMI cords, we don't really need to talk too in depth about it. Um, it's simple, just you, you just need HDMI cords. Um, and then from your mixer, which is the audio portion, which I'm not an expert in, but I'm sure there'll be another um, seminar or talk that talks about sending audio from, you know, the digital mixer or analog, because you can send audio from an analog mixer. And you're basically taking the left and right um, from those mixers and bringing it into your ATEM. And then it's like 10 out of 10, 9 out of 10, pretty much always going to sync up. I've never had an issue with anything syncing up. Um, um, 
Right. And yes, Kwame, I don't know if there's anything you want to add. Yeah. Add. So with the audio, get an audio to ATEM. What you want to do is get a audio interface. I have one here. Um, this is the one that I use for audio interface, right? You want to get an audio interface so you can get a, a, a line from your mixer into here, right? And with this, you can take either, you can grab the audio directly from your, let's say your headphones or your outs into the ATEM. Or if you have this plugged into your computer, um, say you're doing Zoom or on OBS, you can select this interface on your computer to get the audio from it. Cool. That sounds good. So yeah, that that pretty much covers it. You know, the in depth of like how to use it, it's really not complicated. Um, the red button means live. If you had more than one angle, and um, it would one of the buttons would might be green. So like, let's say two would be green. That would be like what you're previewing before you switch to it. So you could either hit cut, which would be like a hard cut, or you could hit auto, which would be like that nice fade effect that you see during worship. Um, and there are some other like manual like swipe things you can do on here, but it's really not necessary. The most you need is this one, two, three, four, and the auto cut. Um, when you're starting your audio, um, you do have to hit on over here. Um, but, you know, we can always do like an in-depth walkthrough another time. Um, but that's like, this is probably the simplest piece of gear um, out there right now that lets you do a lot of things, especially with the the post-production recordings and, and just, just keeping the um, capture card very simple. Um, and I think um, after that, so once you have this system set up, so we, we got the computer, right? You, we need this. So we need the computer and we need the two monitors. We set okay, up. I'll, sorry, I want to I wanna go back to the computer. So the computer, we recommend getting the M1. That's, that's the recommendation right now because it's able to handle the graphics and all that with OBS. So yeah, make sure you're getting the M1 that to be able to handle all the processing that you're gonna be doing. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so yes, yeah, so we we have the computer that this is the computer we need. So we've set it up. Um, we've set up OBS and we've connected to YouTube via the social media. It's not a big push. Then we set up an input into OBS that just says just like video capture or audio capture. So um, once you have set that up, it will just bring the camera right on screen. Um, then that's it. So then after that, all you're doing to connect your cameras to the ATEM is just via HDMI. Um, and what we have here is what everybody knows. And we recommend these specific ones. We have a small rig tripod um we have the black magic g2 and this is the wrong lens this is a sony lens but it is still technically the same thing which is a um a 70 to 200 um because this is what the assumption that most of us are not going to be as close to the stage so we'd be far, probably be a little bit farther back a 7200 has like the best range needed um for covering like a a, a stage in a sense so if we go through the basics, you know, we got the computer, we set up OBS, we connected to YouTube, we turned on the audio, and you know, we connected the cap video capture device, um, which connected to OBS, and then we plugged in the camera, which showed our image. Um, and then when it comes to like the settings and all that, which Kwame also kind of explained about the aperture, stuff like that just like I was saying, it, it probably might depend on if you have an LED screen behind you because that flicker, or if you don't, don't even have anything behind you, um, you know, you might even be able to just pump out 24 frames a second um, with the shutter speed. Um, and Kwame might have like different settings with um, to do, but 
if there's no screen, I feel like you could actually just do the most basic settings possible. Um, and then if there's a screen, just like I said, you might have to like run through that. Um, so if we were to go into OBS, um, I'm so sorry, Dante. Let, let's let's go back to the um, let's go to the uh, ATEM. Okay. So with the ATEM, you can you can record your your service onto an SSD. Correct. Once yeah. that's recorded onto the SSD, you can always go back uh, in post production to do recuts if you know during service if you messed up or um, if you need to change a few a few angles in the video, you can always go back and and fix that. That's one thing I wanted to point out. Yes. Um, yes. And um, just like you said, that's the one of the biggest reasons also why we want to have something like this. Um, just so that we could also simplify the process where I think someone had asked if you were recording something besides the live stream, maybe like the pastor had to give like a speech or something like this would actually be a great way to get that done and just like be done with the, the files right there and then and send that out. Um, or differences like with the ISO where you get each angle, but that's a different conversation. Um, so we have the cameras. And so if we were in OBS, um, when you open OBS, it just gives you these scenes and you literally just press plus, call the scene whatever you want, and you can load anything in there. Um, there really isn't much specifics to change about OBS. Um, and this is really just like a basics walkthrough. Um, literally, when, once you open OBS, you can load whatever you want in here. So I loaded in here something from the Holy Spirit Conference. And um, let's say before the live stream started, before, you know, opening prayers started or something, but you wanted people to start hopping on the live, you could load um, an opening video of whatever it is that you're trying to portray for your church or your, your specific region. And you can play that before you start. And so like, you would have to like also add the audio from the mixer in, in each scene, which is a trick, which I, I figured out that out one time I messed up, but um, yeah. And then let's say this is the, the ATEM portion, which the ATEM portion is, is this switcher. Um, so you would load this switcher in there by literally clicking on um, I think it was oh sorry right there video capture device and then that will bring in the video um, on screen so over here you would see like the camera I, I don't have a to mommy but like you would see like the picture and then you could you could toggle on the logo and stuff like that. So that's kind of like the whole basis of like everything. Then let's say like once you were ending, you could like hit the outro video, which would just, you know, close out so that your, um, your live stream audience could have like a good experience than just, it just ends and stuff like that. So it's kind of like, it might roll like some messages or something or, or can't wait for you guys to come back next week or something like that. Um, and as you can see, you can see the audio of the videos. Um, and you literally just hit start streaming over here where the controls are. I don't know if you can see. When you but before you before you hit start streaming, um, Dante, you want to go over how to connect your YouTube? Yes, yes, that's a good one. Um, so if we go over here, I don't know if you can see, these might be hard yeah, to see. Yeah, we can see it. Okay. So when you click on OBS and you click preferences, um, you just come to the stream place. And um, over here, it would just say connect um, your account. And it's just like literally just signing into Google. And you can connect um, your it will, I think it will log into your, your email and then it will show you your YouTube accounts, that process. You just hit okay. And that's pretty much it. Um, I think that's right, right, Kwame? Yeah, yeah. 
That's it. That's it. Um, and you just hit OK. And after that, just like I said, you would hit start streaming right here. Um, manage broadcast, which is just pulling up the typical YouTube um, setting. And that's it. Um, <clears throat> can I um, add, add something real quick? Of course. Um, so for those of you who want to stream to Zoom, because I know a lot of times uh, aunties and uncles ask for Zoom, what how to get your OBS into Zoom is you want to you want to go to Start Virtual Camera. You want to click on Start Virtual Camera, and then on Zoom you would you would uh, select Virtual OBS Virtual Camera. So then you get the camera in there. And then again, with the audio, you can either get it from the interface or you can get it straight from, you know, the mixer to your computer. Right. And I think on the audio thing, let me just walk through that. So, for example, since I, I call this ATEM, that's the easiest for me to understand. That would be the cameras. Um, if I was adding in the audio from the interface or directly from the mixer, um, It would be audio input capture. Um, and then you can select um, what it is. It might say computer and then interface or this in this specific example, um, there's a, there was a Midas I used somewhere. So I have this Midas USB, which is Midas is a mixture like the Behringer's and stuff like that, different conversation, but it recognized that mixer via, via USB-C um and then i was able to just sync the audio which was not a problem at all um i think that's it i don't know Kwame, if you have something else to say no that's all bro okay um so when we come back here um i think it was it was definitely interesting to talk about when we were talking about the composition portion so if we were applying this to um our type of setting which is church um, when Kwame was talking about those lines on the camera, we should always have those lines on because it helps us with it helps us use the right composition that would be the most pleasing to the eye to understand what is going on. So over here, um, we have a screenshot from Worcester Central. Um, and basically the subject is in the center. Um, like pretty much everything of the subject is in the center. And then you have like the background singers there. Um, but um and uh you have some some people in the in the foreground over here, which kind of adds something to it, but that's not necessary. The basis of what um he was trying to say is that the subject would be in the center, the preacher, the singer, everything would be in the center. You wouldn't do anything fancy like leading lines or anything like that like your main camera the one camera would always be pointing here um now if you had a side camera which i think our brother was talking about earlier um when you're trying to walk through the aisles um or something like that you're trying to get certain things in focus like for example you can see our auntie here is is, is blurred out um it may not be the you probably can't see the picture as best but like Imagine this person's blurred out. Um, it's a little blurrier here, but uh, until over here is like really in focus. Um, and basically, um, if we didn't have autofocus, what we could do is set our focus distance from her. And as we're walking through, it's going to be an aisle. So everybody's going to be in the same see so we'll be able to get a certain person in focus every single time so with that that would probably be the best way is um the focus puller and which would be like you twisting which would be another conversation but as you're walking through twisting to, to get whoever you want in focus adios and um um Anyways, um, Kwame also talked about something called leading lines. 
Now, I feel like I may be wrong, but I feel like this is maybe what he was talking about. So we have our subject and focus here, right? And um, we have leading lines of the these aunties leading to um, her right here. And we're using also using rule of thirds, which I'm also going to go over in like the next slide. So I think this is a good example of like, it's pretty okay composition. It's not the best, but like, I think it's, I think it's nice. That's all. Um, and after that, the last composition for live streaming um, here is rule of thirds. The reason why this looks and feels good is because um he's on the third over here like he's literally in the third space and this empty space over here is bringing our attention to him directly as well we have some foreground here because i think this is probably like a poll which is adding to um the live stream and um there's yeah there's there's nothing too much complicated about that i don't know Kwame, if you want to add to that Okay. Um, Sorry. Yeah. I said, yeah, you got it right. Sorry. I was muted. Okay. okay. Cool. Yeah. cool. I know um, um, if there is one person who wanted to add some, Caleb, are you on? Caleb? Is he on? Okay. Oh, Golda, can you unmute Caleb, please? Yes, I'm trying to find his name. One second. Kayla, can you raise your hand? I guess while 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 we're figuring that out, um, to go back on the budget, um, this isn't really like something that we're saying, you know, you should just go do whatever. Like we're saying like this is what you should do. Like we're trying to emphasize this list here. Um is what you should have in-house for your church to bring your live stream to the current standards that um, we all need to have. So this isn't really like um, you take this list and you're cutting corners and like this specific list is what we are looking for um, that needs to be in-house in our churches. I don't know, Kwame, if you wanna to add to that. Yeah, so yeah, please, when you talk to your pastors, have them understand like i know it's a little it may be a little high but you know we need to invest in these things in order to get us going because some of our churches are kind of behind so please 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 if you can get these equipments to at least get us started so we can build on from here i believe um i have spoken to pastor morgan we're gonna we're going to do hands-on, but not right now, um, to just kind of give more knowledge on how to better use these equipments. But again, when we come on site and to train, and if you don't have these, we might not be able to really get you up to date. So please talk to your pastors to try to get you these equipments. Yes. Um, I let me can ask your question. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Caleb, go ahead. Oh, the only contribution that I was gonna add was um, that part where he was showing you how to connect your YouTube to OBS. Um, I think Kwame said earlier, if you want to stream to multiple sources and you use Restream.io, what you would do is you would go there and then just adjust it to say Restream.io instead of YouTube, just so that it can correspond back to Restream. If you choose to do Restream versus uh, going straight to YouTube. Yes. Yeah, that was a good one. That was a good one. Thank you. Um, who has a question? Um, Simon, you can go ahead. Um, yes. So during uh, production, if there are scenes you don't want to show, or maybe we are calling singers whilst they're walking on stage, how do you take care of? Uh, those shots, you don't want them to go out. If you're using the OBS, how how do you show something different 
without yeah. showing it to the people in the auditorium. Right. So, um, Delta, can you turn back on OBS real yes. quick? Yes, sir. So with OBS, it had there's uh I think he was only showing the the preview part, but it, you can turn on the studio. So Delta, turn on the studio. Okay. So on your left side is your preview of whatever is going to stream onto YouTube, right? So if let's say you want to take off a a lower third or uh, Dante, do you have any lower thirds built in in there yes so if you want to bring in the lower thirds what you want to do is turn it on with that eye icon or if you don't want it on there you can right and then so now you can you can fade it in so click that fade and then you're going to see it's going to pop up right so if you don't want it on there, you just have to, you just turn it off with that eye icon again. Dante, can we demonstrate that again, please? Oh, sorry, so sorry. No, it's okay. That's 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 all. That's all I wanted. Yeah. So you just yeah. So you turn that off and then click fade again, and then it will take it off. Make sense, Simon? I think you had a question, right? No, Eric has a question though. Oh, Eric, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yes, please. Um, so my question is, so currently in our uh, congregation, in our PIWC, um, we have a media guy, which I'm learning from, and he introduced PTZ cameras for us. And instead of using like the camera, like how you guys would... We have PTC cameras that we have screwed into the ceiling and those move around. We can zoom, we can focus, and we can do all that. So like right now we have two where one's in the front of the church and one's in the back so that we can like go around and capture it. The, like the, it, the camera looks great and everything like that. But mm -hmm. my thing is, um, would you recommend those PTC cameras or do you think like, It'd be better to have an actual camera. Yeah, so PTZs are great. PTZs are great when you don't have anybody to man the cameras, right? Um, they work fine. But the image coming out of that that camera is not as of a good quality as the Black Magic. Yeah, and I think I could be wrong. The sensors also in PTZ cameras are probably closer to the sensors that we have in our phones. So that mm -hmm. would also affect the information coming in since we know that like the sensors in our cameras are they're just they're just way bigger so they're able to take in a lot of information and then right. having the lens with the 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 camera also changes the depth of field or like the sharpness for the blurry background so a ptz camera would not ptz camera camcorder those two um because i know that Someone's always going to say, oh, I have a high left 4K uh, camcorder, but that's not going to give you the effect that you're looking for. So Not all 4Ks are. 4K. That's essentially what he's trying to say. Um, yeah, if if you've noticed, a lot of 4Ks are not as sharp or as a good quality as some of these cameras out there. So they can sell you 4K, but it's not true 4K. Any more questions? No, I think you can continue. Okay. Dante, are you are you done? Yeah, I'm all set. All right. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for joining in. Uh, if you guys have any questions, you can side message me or you know, find me on Instagram at kwamiajjr.com. Oh, I said or at kwamiaj junior or you can visit my website, kwamejjr.com, or, you know, email me, info at kwamejjr.com to chat if you have more questions. Um, uh, someone asked a question, is the Canon 80D a good camera, I guess, to use? Canon, Canon 80D is a good camera, but it's very old school. Um, 
it's not bad if you're just starting out. If you get you a good lens, I think you'll be fine. Oh, someone also said to add your contact information in the chat. Oh. And also for the slides, if I, if anyone wanted it, you can just DM the Youth and Pensa page on Instagram and then they'll share it with you. I took the emails down, but just in case if I messed up on anything, it's best to just DM them and they'll give it to you. Sorry, it's the COP USA page. Uh, not the, yeah. Um. All right, Golda, we're, we're done. So if you wanna, yeah. okay. So no one has any more questions. Oh, um, I have a question. Eric, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, please. I was wondering, can you guys please share the website with us in the beginning when you talked about where we can like get more learning if we want to go in depth and learn more about cameras and everything like that, please. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll do that. So if you want that info, um, again, just put your email. Golda, how are you receiving it? Just on the chat. Yeah, like if you typed in the chat, I took your email down, but you can also just um DM the page just to make sure. So. I think you put your email in earlier, so I have your email. I'm, I'm correct. Yeah, just make sure you you add your email. And again, this is just the basics of things, right? We're going to have hands on and everything for training. Um, we're working. We're trying to work out something here. So once we get that, we'll let you guys know, announce it, and let you know when we're going to do that. Cool. I also see I'm getting like some direct messages, but I think someone asked a question would we host a video editing session in the future? I think that's what Kwame is talking about. Yeah. Um, so we're going to do all that when we when we have the hands on stuff. Um, Pastor Larry, I'm not sure if you want us to get into editing on virtual because that's kind of it's, it's kind of tricky. But you know, if that's something that we want to work on, maybe we can start planning. Them. David. Oh, and I know Kodak, you're you're on here, right? Kodak. Yeah, I think we'll have other other um sessions that we can do online before the in-person stuff comes or when we visit other regions. So I think those are in the works, but these ones will be like a, a preliminary training and kind of getting acquainted with other things or getting gear so that when we start doing all those things, everybody's kind of like have at least a foundation uh, before um, we meet to do all those. So I think that's where we are. I think uh, next month we'll have another session um, leading to the end of the year. And then next year to have a different um, rollout plan for that as well. Sounds good. Um, uh, Simon, Simon, raise you raise your hand. Go ahead. Um, yes. Uh, one thing I want to touch on is how um, our churches can also grow our online audience. Sometimes some are very discouraging. For example, mm -hmm. if the church invests so much in this equipment. And um, you get like five, 10 views uh, consistently. It's not really encouraging. And that's why some of these um, elders or pastors don't see the need to sometimes commit so much financial resources to mm -hmm. this. So as part of the training, maybe we should also focus on ways to churn out better production and how people can get glued to whatever we put out and how to grow the audience, just in case. It's very competitive now. Every church is streaming, especially on YouTube. And if maybe as part of the future trainings, we can also teach techniques to 
do better production and how to grow the audience. That, that's something I just wanted to put across. I agree. Um, yeah, so I mean, it's all about your your um, the quality, your sound. Uh, people don't realize like sound is a big thing when it comes to video. Your video can be so good, but if your sound is horrible, people will tune out quick. Right. So that's something that we're also going to touch on is sound, how to set your sound right for streaming. But that one is going to be for another another day. Um, Caleb, I know we'll have uh, a lot of knowledge on that. And then we'll try to touch base with Justice. Maybe he can also hop in and and give an idea on how to set it right. Caleb. What's up? Uh, is there anything you want to say about sound? Just a quick, uh, quick, you know, something about sound streaming with sound. Um, definitely getting the interface would help, because then you can play with the the presets and settings and effects and whatnot to make it easier for you to have good sound going through. So I think that's the only thing I would add for first. For... All right, thank you, bro. Okay, anyone else or? Okay, I think so this concludes it. Thank you both so much. Um, Pastor Larry, are you still on? By any chance? Pastor Larry? Sorry, I have to find him. I don't see his hand. Hmm. All right, before Pastor Larry comes, yeah. Um, I think um, this is the first of many that are coming. Oh, Pastor, is the Pastor, are you on? Oh. Yeah, he's right there. Yeah, please, uh, David, go ahead and then I'll come oh. up. Yeah, um, this is the first of many coming. Like, we're, we're doing a series of training, and next month there will be other ones that are coming up. Um, and we'll try and do monthly or, you know, every other month. Um, training on these things before if we can do um, regional or zonal meetings where people can come in and do like in-person training stuff but the idea is we are trying to get the good things the quality stuff especially with the gear and equipment um, so that you get them in your districts or assemblies and then as time goes on we train people um, and then people become well-versed in these things, uh, give or take with time, quality uh, production will come out of it. So uh, we're just telling everybody to be on the lookout. I mean, you can learn on your own, but we also have these training sessions where we have expect um, folks to come on and teach us and show us all these other things to make our pen media um, better. So yeah, so next month there will be a new session. Um, um, we'll roll out the flyers uh, very soon and then we'll know what we'll be doing. Yeah, for now, all right. Okay, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Kwame. Thank you, Dalte. Uh, beloved, uh, we, we've had a whole lot of things. We've got a lot of tips. I know, I know people are still gathering questions, people, uh, but you know, the Pent Media is a new ministry now for us that we are building. And so uh, we are putting the whole platform together where questions, where you, avenues, where all of us can get all the information. And just as David said, we are planning seminars and workshop like this on a monthly basis. Uh, not only do we come to hear, but also we come with our questions and then uh, we can all see how best we can grow the ministry. I want to acknowledge all our ministers on the line. And also we do also have a uh, we have quite a lot of ministers joining online. I've, I was checking through. Uh, we are happy that you are on because uh, you, you saw what we put out there is money. So when, when the Pent Media is coming, please get ready. It's because we are seeking excellence. Uh -huh. So please just keep that in mind and, 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 and help us come out with excellent uh, media. 
And so please be helpful with us. When we mention it to you, you it's good that you were online. We also want to acknowledge our IT director. He's uh, the, the director for, we fall under, under the IT department of the church as well. Uh, Pastor Morgan was also here. Yeah, so, and as it was mentioned, uh, uh, God willing, early next year, maybe in the, within the first two months, we'll be having the IT conference and it's gonna be Pent Media, Pent Media. We want all of you to keep that in mind. We are planning some residence program, uh, hands-on and all those things will take place. So prepare yourself. Uh, we are taking this gift that God has given us to another level. And so we want all of you to keep that in mind. Yeah, we are taking it to another level. Yeah, so uh, please, uh, as you're giving your emails and all that, uh, know that we'll be reaching out to you. And uh, if you have any issue too, I know most of the regions have Pent Media uh, kind of uh, leadership. Please reach out to them. We are trying to form that higher hierarchy so that whatever questions and issues you do have, it can be addressed uh, by some of our experts in the media uh, spectrum. Okay, God, God bless you so much. Amen. Yeah. So God bless our minister. God bless our Pent Media leaders. God bless everyone who, who came. Yeah. And uh, keep your questions coming through all the platforms that we have we have laid out there. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor. And yes, if anyone has any questions or one of the slides, just make sure you can send us a DM. I think we put it in the chat, but I'll re-put it again. Um, is Elder Josh on the line? Do you mind giving us a closing prayer, please? Uh, before Elder Josh comes, um, please, it's the COP USA Inc. DM or Pent Media USA at gmail.com. COP USA Inc. INC on um, social um, um, Instagram. You can DM us uh, or Pent Media USA at gmail.com. Please send all your. The, all the emails, please send it over there. Just send a message. Just send a message over there so that we can collect all that, that data. You can send it either way. On Zoom, we might not be able to pull everything. We'll try and pull everything. But if you, you don't hear from us, please send us the message on P, um, on pensmediausa at gmail.com. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Please, can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right. Uh, I'm to give the benediction or the closing prayer and the benediction, the please. Closing prayer. All right. Shall we? Shall we pray, please? Blessed Lord, we thank you for the opportunity of being in your presence, Father. Everything that we have been taught and we have learned, you have to commit into your hands. We pray that your Spirit will be with us and will be our guide. We pray that you will rest with us. Thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God thank bless you. you. And thank you, everyone, for joining. God bless. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night.